Welcome to this demonstration about pressure surges or water hammer as some people like to call it. Let's see if we can produce some pressure surges in the pipeline below. We have a simulation program that's a little uh, computer program which calculates how things flow in, in a long pipeline. Let's start it. In this pipeline water is now flowing at 3 meters per second. Near the inlet the pressure is around 5 megapascals or 50 bars. If we go towards the outlet we see that the pressure goes down a little bit because there's friction along the pipeline so that friction leads to a pressure loss and at the outlet we do in this case have around 4.47 megapascals of pressure. There's a valve located here by the outlet and I can close it by clicking this button. That turned out to generate a pressure waves which propagates upstream up to the inlet end where it's reflected and it propagates back again towards the closed valve. and is reflected again and it goes back and forth a lot of times. Let's speed up the simulations to see what, how this develops after quite a long time. We see the simulation clock above is beginning to run fast and we also see that this reflects a lot of times but with a smaller and smaller amplitude so eventually it will come to rest, but it takes quite a long time to do so. There is finally at rest. But what is going on here? Let's have a closer look at the details. I have now restarted the simulations again. The valve is open and the velocity is 3 meters per second again and we notice the pressure by the outlet is 4.47 megapascals. I close it again and then I pause the simulation. So how much did the pressure increase? It went from 4.47 and up to 8.42 megapascals. That's quite a significant uh, increase, around 3.9 megapascals or 39 bars. We can see this as a step if we go up to the pressure front. Here we see it is 8.42 on one side of the pressure front and once we and the velocity is zero there. So this is the area where the water now has had has been stopped by the closed valve. While across the front it's still flowing as before. And the pressure is uh, is much lower. So we see there is a very strong pressure step right here. Now one interesting and quite counterintuitive thing we are observing at this point in time is that at the inlet no information has yet arrived telling the inlet end to stop the water flowing in there while the outlet end is obviously closed. So it is flowing just as before at the inlet but nothing is flowing out of the pipe. And that explains why the pressure becomes very high here although it's, it feels kind of funny that not only does it flow as before at the inlet end it's uh, not affected in any way at all and so the, the closure of the valve has no impact at all at this point in time at the inlet end. We may also get the feeling for which mechanisms are at work here uh, as the water is stopped its kinetic energy becomes potential energy and this is due to the elasticity of the pipe wall so the pipe diameter is very very slightly increases, not as much as it looks like on this 
uh, animation simulation but it increases a little bit and also the water compresses so that its density increases ever so slightly and that is almost like a, a spring so that the kinetic energy is then transformed to potential energy in the form of this compressed water and the elasticity in the pipe wall. We would think that the longer the pipe the higher pressure rise we would get but that isn't so because a longer pipe although there is more water to stop and so more kinetic energy to begin with but the amount of water stopped per second doesn't change so if the pipe is longer it takes a longer time to stop all of the water and the end result is that it doesn't create a higher pressure but the starting velocity on the other hand does play a role suppose we stop this simulation and we make a new one let's uh, start and then open so we get up again to 3 meters per second well so I don't have to wait for this to die out let's just stop it again and start again now we have starting conditions and I go well okay let's try higher velocity this time so I have now 6 meters per second now then what would happen if I close the outlet valve? Let's try. If we look at the pressure step here, it is 10.86 megapascal at one side and 3.29 at the other. So in this case the step is about twice as high as it was when the starting velocity was 3 meters per second. So a doubling of the starting velocity led to a doubling of the pressure step. So obviously if we want to avoid these high pressures we have to start out with relatively low velocities if we are going to close any valves very quickly. It is actually quite easy to calculate how much the pressure changes if we change the velocity we simply multiply the density of the fluid uh, and the speed of sound and uh, the amount we change the velocity so put together for a simple example let's say we have a density of 1000 kilograms per cubic meter typically water and speed of sound I have chosen round numbers here, 1000 meters per second and suppose the water is flowing at 10 meters per second before we suddenly close a valve. That means the velocity change is from 10 meters per second down to zero. We then get a pressure increase of 10 to the power of 7 pascals which is 10 megapascals or 100 bars. So that's easily more than most systems can handle and it shows that we of course choose <laughs> we try to avoid this in most systems uh, by the way if the velocity change is negative which it is at the back of the valve at the other side if we have a valve in the middle of a pipeline then the pressure will fall 10 megapascals rather than increase 10 megapascals and that can easily bring us down to boiling so we can get cavitation at the downstream end of the valve low pressures can form not only at the downstream end of a valve but also at the upstream end that is probably a less well known phenomenon because if we now close the valve again we see the valve travel upstream and then at this situation when the valve has traveled back and forth one time it's actually a low pressure wave that travels up again so now the pressure is down to 2 megapascals it was um, 4.5 before we started 
So obviously now the pressure is lower than before we close the valve. So what happens in a simple pipeline like this is that just after we close a valve instantaneously the pressure goes up but then the reflecting wave that comes back after that creates a low pressure wave and then the pressure falls to a level almost as far below the level we had before we started as the rise was above that level. The only difference being some uh, energy lost by friction in between. So cavitation caused by low pressure at the upstream side of a valve we close very fast is a big problem when we have transients in a liquid system. How fast do the pressure surges propagate? Uh, the speed of sound is actually an input parameter to the simulations. The speed of sound for a liquid filled pipe tends to be around 1300 meters per second. Uh, let's say we choose a 13 kilometer long pipeline and we want to see how long it takes for a wave to propagate from this end and back. Obviously if the speed is 13 meters per 1300 meters per second and the length is 13 kilometers we would expect it to take 10 seconds for the wave to propagate up here and then 10 seconds to propagate back again. So this is one of the ways we can also check our simulation program actually because what the simulation program comes up with here has to agree with the input we gave it. Let's see if that happens. We start the simulations and I will click here just as now. And then we see here, okay, it has now gone for 20 seconds. Exactly 20 seconds when the wave had gone one time. Let's do that again at a somewhat slower motion. I slow down the speed, I open again, so I start at the same velocity as before, 3 meters per second, and I start. And then let's see, I close the inlet, let's say, when this comes up here, uh, uh, sorry, I will close the outlet and we will see it takes 10 seconds. Close there. And then let's see, there I stop it again. So it took, I was a little bit late, so it wasn't exactly 10 seconds, but almost. Continue until the wave comes back again. There it is, and that took, well, 25 seconds, so I wasn't completely accurate here. But this agrees, more or less, it propagates at the velocity we expect according to the input we gave it. What happens if we have gas rather than liquid in the pipeline? One of the longest uh, subsea pipelines exporting gas from Norway to the continent is the sea pipe pipeline. It goes from a platform in the North Sea it's 813 kilometers long approximately. It has an inner diameter of slightly less than one meter. It is almost horizontal so we don't bother with the elevation profile here. Uh, the speed of sound is much lower for a gas. Uh, it isn't quite the same in the whole pipeline but let's for simplicity say it is 340 meters per second and uh, Suppose the density is uh, 50 kilograms per cubic meter. That's actually a bit low for say pipe because the pressure in it is uh, up to around, and f uh, around 15 megapascals at the inlet. But uh, the scaling of this animation is such that it looks nicer if we reduce the pressure a little bit. So we do that for simplicity here. Okay, let's start this. So we have only 5 megapascals rather than 15 at the inlet end 
and down in Sebrega that leads to uh, only 28 megapascals which is also a factor of 3 too low compared to what the typical pressure there would be. The velocity though around 3 meters per second is, is quite realistic. What happens here if we close the outlet? Things change very slowly. We speed them up so it doesn't take so long. Of course, finally, it will lead to the velocity in the whole pipeline coming to rest, but we see it takes hours to do so. So it can even take days to stabilize the flow in such a long pipeline. Now, if early one morning down in Sebrega it's cold and I put on a gas heating system and start to use gas, well now it's very fast here, let's slow it down again. Once they start to spend more gas, to consume more gas, that has most consequences for the near outlet of the pipe at first. The first hours it takes from the stored gas in the pipeline. This so-called packing effect is quite important as a storage method. So the platform out in the North Sea doesn't have to feed in as much gas as is taken out down by Sebrega in this case. Uh, the method used in the calculations running in the background here is called the method of characteristics and it is not really suited for uh, gas flow. It doesn't calculate this packing effect accurately. It calculates pressure surges quite accurately so the pressure increase when you close a valve very fast is quite accurate but not, not the packing effect. But it's good enough for illustration here. But to get really accurate results we need other calculation methods which are described in some books. You can go and get your free copies of two books which describes the theory behind pressure surges and other transient pipe flow at drbratland.com. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you for watching.